Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on The Real Estate Podcast. I am Todd Sumney, the Chief Industry Officer for HomeSmart. And I'm joined here today with Rich LaRue. Say hello, Rich. Hello, hello, Rich. Hello, Todd. And we are so excited about our special guest today, Matt Sorensen. If you haven't met Matt, you are going to be thrilled at today's episode. But before I dig in, I kind of want to set up today's episode. This is part two of a three-part series. The series is entitled, The Tax and Legal Strategies Realtors Need to Know About and in Need to Implement for Themselves and Their Clients. So the tax and legal strategies real estate agents need to know about and need to implement for themselves and their clients. Our first episode, uh, Rich interviewed and had as a guest, Mark Kohler, uh, Mark and Matt worked very closely together, um, and Mark is the number one tax lawyer for real estate agents and their customers and small business owners in America. He's an author, uh, pod dot podcast uh, uh, talent. He does a podcast with Matt, our guest today as well, and um, some would say he is the greatest of all time at small <laughs> business owner tax law. And I know that last week's episode was a phenomenal episode. Oh, the, man, there was so much information. It was like drinking out of a fire hose. <laughs> so for those, of you that, for those of you that missed it, go back and watch last week's episode. So episode one was, tell them the title, Rich. Don't screw up your S-Corp. <laughs> and yeah. even more importantly, how to implement the trifecta for real estate agents. So they, they explained this in great detail last week. You can also find it in some of the books and the podcasts um, with this team here that's um, with us today. But uh, episode two uh, today, the title is Self-Directed IRAs, Unlocking the $35 trillion in IRAs, 401ks to invest in real estate. Can't wait to dig into that topic. And then episode three, which we will record uh, here shortly, hot tax strategies and estate planning and key protection and privacy tactics. But without any further ado, let's uh, dig into today's uh, topic. Um, and we have with us Matt Sorensen. So Matt is the number one advisor and attorney for real estate agents and their customers on self-directed IRAs. And I listened to an a introduction last night of Matt. Uh, someone else had introduced him. And they also called Matt the greatest of all time on <laughs> self-directed IRAs. And uh, you are an author. You have a phenomenal book, The Self-Directed IRA Handbook. Uh, it is available. I bought my copy on Amazon. And we're going to go over some resources, how you guys can get uh, connected with these resources, but uh, you're going to want to go to Amazon or some other source, and I'm going to recommend that you're going to want to purchase this book. And, um, you know, but I'd like to take that minute here and introduce Matt Sorensen. Thank you for joining us today, the greatest of all time when it comes yeah. to self directed IRAs. I appreciate that. You know, I stay in my lane, greatest of all time on self directed IRAs. I can claim that, but outside of that, I'm pretty average, you know, so, uh, and I'm happy we're talking about self-directed IRAs in real estate. So I want everybody to realize your IRA, your 401k can own real estate, right? It can own a rental property. It could flip a property. It could lend someone else money on a real estate deal. It can invest in a fund and pool into an LLC with some people buying a small commercial or multifamily deal. Um, so IRAs and retirement accounts can do this. I want to break it down today, but this is what I love teaching about. That's what our companies do. And directed IRA where we handle the IRA accounts or our law firm where Mark and I are partners, KQS lawyers, um, advising clients every day. So this is my lane. Hopefully I'll share something that'll make a difference for all of you in your business and in your investments. Oh, We're excited to get started, Matt. Yeah, we are. All right. So, so let's dig in here. I do have a little bit of an agenda here today. Uh, thought I would, um, we would start with talking about some legal disclaimers. Uh, we're never gonna dig into some resources right out of the gate, because everybody will immediately have questions. Where can I go to get some more additional information? We're gonna show some of those to you, but then we're gonna dig into the concept and what the opportunity really is. We're gonna unpack why a real estate professional and or a consumer would want to do this. 
We're going to talk about some of the rules, some things you can do and can't do. And we're going to talk about then, okay, now you're bought in. Now you see the opportunity. How do you go about this? And some details, what does it cost? How do I get started? And that's where we will recap and hit those resources again. And then if we even have time, we'll talk about some tactics or action items about how real estate agents can leverage this right now in 2023 and uh, put this to work for them. So, uh, Matt, you know, I'd love to start here real quick with, you know, just some legal disclaimers. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we're going to, this yeah. podcast is geared toward real estate professionals, but some of them are going to want to share this with their consumers, but everyone should be learning more. They should go to different websites, to your website, to books. They should read, they should um, uh, contact professionals legal professionals, accounting professionals, et cetera. Uh, so please take everything that we say today. We're trying to present the opportunity, but we urge you and you need to get your own advice. Do you have anything, Matt, to add to that? Yeah, this is a, you know, I'm an attorney, so I can give a good disclaimer, you know. So, I mean, this is meant to be educational in nature. It doesn't constitute financial or legal advice. Consult your own professionals when conducting actual transactions. So that was my little disclaimer, but uh, my malpractice carrier makes me say that. Uh, no, just kidding, but, um, but, you know, it's important. I think self-directing retirement account, we're going to kind of get into this and in some of the rules. It's, you know, you got to be careful on what you learn because like everything on the internet or every book out there, there's a lot of BS, quite honestly. And there's a lot of people hyping stuff up that don't know what they're talking about. So you got to get good information out there. And that's what we're trying to do here today. Um, my book is used by the National Association in the self-directed space. Um, it's been used by government agencies, federal and state regulators have used my book. Um, they buy my book in bulk. All my competitors buy my book to train their employees. It's used as a certification training program in our industry. So it's like vetted um, in terms of like, okay, I can rely on this. This guy knows what he's talking about. Um, so I hope you, I want you to feel comfortable in that and in, in the strategy and everyone here, even though we just gave a disclaimer. <laughs> but the other thing I'll say too is self-directing a retirement account and buying real estate. Some people think, ah, oh, this is too complicated. It's not complicated. It does take learning how to do this though. How can my, a lot of people are used to just buying a mutual fund and clicking a button online, you know? Oh, okay, that's really easy. But are you happy with what's happening? Um, buying real estate takes a little more work, just like buying real estate personally and investing in real estate. So it does take a little more work, but I like to tell people it's like learning a board game. It's not rocket science. It's just like a board game. Once you play the board game a few times, you know how to do it, but you got to play the first time with someone who's done it before or read the rule book. So uh, that's what we're trying to hope give you the guidelines today. So you know what the heck the game is, where to go, how to figure this out. And then just know your first time doing it. You, you're going to have some questions and that's okay. But it's not hard. The answers are there. There's people that know what they're doing. Our team knows how to help you through that. We've helped, you know, we have one and a half billion dollars of clients invested in real estate, um, opening 30, 40 new accounts a day of clients doing this. So um, we're in the mix. We know what we're doing. We can help you along on the journey too. Love hearing that. So speaking of action items or resources, number one, uh, you have a book that is out um, called Self -direct, The Self-Directed IRA Handbook by uh, Matt, Matt Sorsen with one T, M-A-T-S-O-R-S-E-N. Is that correct? That's it, you got okay, it. Okay, so I have it misspelled there on the screen, I apologize. But um, there, so uh, the book is one great resource. Uh, additionally, you have a website, do you not, uh, called yeah. directedira.com. Yeah, and that's our company where you can open up an account. So we'll get to this, when you wanna do this, you need an actual self-directed account, right? Uh, okay. We'll get into why. And, and uh, so that's where we provide that account. We have tons of educational resources. We have a podcast that I do with my partner, Mark, the Directed IRA podcast that is just about self-directing. And the most common thing someone will do when they're self-directing their retirement account is buy real estate. So we got lots of educational free resources to go and just get educated. Right. Love that. And then if they want additional help as well, there is um, you have a law firm. Uh, yeah. that is behind or associated with you. Could you describe that to the audience and about if someone yeah. wants help from a law firm or from tax accountants or just accountants, do you have resources to help them? Yeah, so we have a law firm. Mark and I are partners in that. We have four offices, 50 plus people on the team, attorneys helping clients across the country. We're tax and business planning law firms. We're helping clients save taxes, plan and protect their assets. 
um, structure their real estate and business opportunities. So that's what our law firm is doing. And that includes advising clients on using IRAs and 401ks to buy real estate. So we're here if you need some advice or you need LLC set up for this. A lot of clients will use an LLC in conjunction with this. I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, so we're here for you in terms of a law firm, which is KQS Lawyers. You can get them at kqslawyers.com. Schedule an appointment with any one of the attorneys here. I wanted to take a minute and personally introduce all of you real estate agents to House Happy. House Happy is a comprehensive home concierge service that simplifies all aspects of home repairs, maintenance, service history, inventory tracking, and receipts, all co-branded to you, the agent, and from you, the agent, with your photo, your links, and contact info always highly visible. House Happy is designed to keep you top of mind, creating customers for life while effortlessly building and strengthening your relationships in your database, making you your customer's go-to agent every time. With House Happy, you'll be helping your clients and homeowners care for their largest investment through high-touch white glove home concierge service, a powerful custom branded home app and website that tracks value changes, stores critical home-related data, and solves all home maintenance, repair, renovation, and moving needs. It helps you, the agent, stay top of mind for as long as your customers own their home with custom-branded service reminders with industry-leading open rates and alerts when your clients are taking actions that they indicate they may be in the market for selling, buying, or refinancing. I want to let all of you know I've personally used House Happy. I needed to have my pool cleaner repaired and all of the O-rings and the seals in my pump replaced. I went into my House Happy app, I filled out a few quick questions about what I was needing, and House Happy automatically contacted multiple pool companies in my area and they sent me multiple bids and I could choose which company I wanted to engage with and I set up my appointment quickly and they came and showed up and the repair was phenomenal and my pool has never been cleaner. I was able to actually uh, track one of the bids that when I was trying to decide which company to use. One of my neighbors, the van from the company that gave me the vid was right out in front of their home and I said, well, they're already in my neighborhood. My, my neighbor's using them. That's the company that I chose. So House Happy makes it so easy for your customers to manage their repairs. And on top of it, now there is in my profile and in my account, there is a record of the date and the time and what service I had done on my pool equipment. So someday I have a log of all of the maintenance items in my home and what I've done to maintain my home. So I love House Happy. I hope all of you agents will explore it because you can start providing this to your clients and your customers as a closing gift and as a, a neat way to stay top of mind. Now House Happy has an exclusive offer only available for HomeSmart agents. If you use code HOMESMART80, it will waive your $200 setup fee and you'll only pay $20 a month to be able to provide this service free to your customers and clients. This discounted rate entitles you to provide active clients with unique closing gifts as well as offer the platform to new prospects, past clients, and referral partners. So visit partner.househappy.com forward slash homesmart to learn more or get started today. And while you're there, don't miss their informative video for all of you agents. On top of it, you can also find House Happy inside of Real Smart Agent in the Agent Marketplace area on the left-hand navigation bar. And you'll also find that video for you agents in the Agent Marketplace. You can um, engage with House Happy on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash House Happy Real Estate Professionals. Let's dig in. This right, is exciting. I mean, I've let's been hyping it. this. I've been hyping this for weeks as I've been traveling around the country talking to agents because, uh, you know, this is a this is a, a very large opportunity for consumers as well as real estate professionals. Mm -hmm. um, and the title of this tap into the thirty five trillion IRAs and four hundred one ks that are out there. Can you talk about that a little bit and kick us off? Yeah, the yeah, opportunity. I think the yeah, I think the first conceptual thing, if you're a real estate professional, 
Um, you invest in real estate, you sell real estate. I mean, everyone in the real estate industry needs to know this strategy. This is the most underutilized strategy in the real estate industry, using the 35 trillion in IRA or 401ks to invest in real estate. I want everybody to take a step back. If you're like, hey, I love real estate. I'd like to buy real estate with my IRA or 401k because I think I'll get a better return on real estate as an investment than I will the mutual fund that my 401k or IRA happens to own. And that's a, there's a category of people that are like, oh my gosh, I could buy real estate and I believe in that and think it's gonna do better than crappy mutual fund that's in my current IRA or 401k that I don't even know what the heck it is. But, but if you're like, man, I don't care about building my own retirement account, but I wanna sell real estate to people. Well, where do you think people's investable money is right now? There is no place that has more money to invest in anything than U.S. retirement accounts. It's where all the money's at. We've been trained to save there. All this accumulation of investable capital is in IRAs or 401ks. And they've always been able to buy real estate. You've always been able to buy a rental property, a flip a property, lend someone else money on a real estate deal, co-invest with a bunch of other people in an LLC to buy real estate. Like since retirements were created in the 70s, you can do this. The problem's been broker dealers are the ones who first started setting up IRAs or 401k accounts. They heard about this. They're like, oh, people can save this way. There's tax incentives and we can charge them for these accounts and we can sell them the investments we already have, stocks and mutual funds and let's sell them some bonds too. So when retirement accounts came out, the whole financial services industry just dominated and said, we're gonna sell you what we have. We have stocks and mutual funds. So when you set up an IRA with Merrill Lynch, what can you buy? What do we sell? Stocks and mutual funds. We don't sell real estate, it's not our business. Uh, and then the insurance industry got into it and they're like, hey, we're gonna set up IRAs and 401ks. And so if you have an IRA at you know, New York Life or Northwestern Mutual, what do you think your IRA can buy there? An annuity, because that's what they sell, right? So um, the real estate industry kind of just let it go. You know, They're like, yeah, we won't worry about it. And it's always been around. There's been some smaller banks or you know, if you're a high net worth person, you know, maybe your advisor helped you do it. But for the most majority of people, they never even knew this was possible that they could do this. And so it's always been around. Let me just say that's the first thing um, I want to get out of the gate. This is not new. It's been here forever since retirement accounts were created. But it has grown in popularity drastically over the last 10 to 15 years as people are learning how to invest in real estate more. They're learning how to tap into their IRA or 401k dollars. The mystery of it has been dispelled through education. The, fr frankly, the internet and things like that, that where this was kind of a secret before because the financial service industry didn't want you to know about it. So it's growing. We're trying to get the word out there. And this is huge because there's no more money to invest in anything. And why not connect real estate, which might be your business, with the number one place of where dollars are? I I love that. And, and I got to tell you one quick story about how I got um, yeah. interested in this and how I got connected with you. Uh, there's a real estate uh, professional that I work with that her and her husband have yeah. over 20 properties in self-directed IRAs that they have yeah. purchased over the years. And she described to me what she did instead of um, the stock market route, she went mm -hmm. this route because this is her industry. It's what she understands. Yeah. And she has built incredible wealth and security through deploying yeah. your strategies. I also then, when I started to talk about it with agents, talked about the other tactic you described, real estate agents working with their young clients or their older clients and teaching them about how their consumer clients can actually use their 401k to invest in real estate as well. And yes, that's been a source of additional transactions. So, you know, um, very powerful. It's a huge, it's a huge strategy. And I think particularly if you're a real estate professional, like where do you have a competitive advantage in investing? You know, I've done continuing education classes for real estate professionals for years, you know, and I'll be in a room full of real estate agents and brokers and I'll ask, how many of you have IRA or 401k dollars? And you know, maybe half the room raises their hand. Um, and I'm like, how many of you know a good mutual fund to buy? Everyone's hand goes down. How many okay. of you know a good rental or real estate property to invest in? Everyone's hand in the room pops up. And I'm like, wait a second. How many of you that raised your hand on the first question have mutual funds in your IRA 401k? All their hands come back up. 
And I'm like, why are you investing in some, like you've just been lazy. And so with all this accumulation of dollars and wealth that we have in retirement accounts, let's invest it in what we know. You know, the, the, the regular person out there, like self-directing is not necessarily for everyone. Frankly, some people are just like, just buy a mutual fund. You don't know what you're doing. You're not putting the time reference into it. But if you're a real estate professional in the real estate business, seeing real estate opportunity, it's like a no brainer that you should be investing your retirement account in your industry and what you know. And there's millions and millions of people who have just invested in mutual funds. You can find those uh, with low fees. And for mm -hmm. a lot of people, Matt, it does make sense. My dad was a stock market investor. He understood it. He studied it. He made lots mm -hmm. of money doing that. I didn't get that gene. Yeah. Uh, I invest in a company and it goes down. I yeah. should probably learn how to short stocks. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. but I do know real estate and have been around uh, before uh, I had uh, facial hair, let alone have it come in white. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's uh, so invest in what we know. I just I really like this concept. Uh, and yeah. I'm excited to roll up our sleeves and dig in. So, so Matt, awesome. real quick, I asked Rich to do a little research because um, I didn't have time to pull together, you know, my data. But mm -hmm. it feels like to me that my 401k has gone down in the last couple of years. And um, most people have it, their the 401k is it, a 201k now. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly Very it. Funny. But if I would have uh, known about this sooner and I would have invested in real estate, real estate prices during that same time period have risen. Oh, and yeah. um, on top of it, at least double. Yeah, you and I had the conversation right before we started recording about how and there's one other subtle little difference too, that with um, the real estate aspect with a renter in place. Now you have someone else making that payment and making mm -hmm. that investment versus me before I was the only one paying into my 401k, right? Yeah, but yeah. now there's somebody else actually making that Remember, Rich? We were well, and, and to go way back to to real estate 101 here and, and you know, versus investing in stocks, you can take twenty five thousand dollars just to pick a number and put it into the stock market and you will own twenty five thousand dollars worth of stock on that day. You know, right. it'll go up, it'll go down, whatever. Right. Right. But you're controlling twenty five thousand dollars worth of stock. When you buy real estate and you put twenty five thousand dollars down on a just pick a number, a uh, three hundred thousand dollar home, right? Right. You are now controlling the investment of that three hundred thousand dollar home, and so as it goes up in value, you gain momentum. You 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 get traction with that uh, because you know if it goes up three percent, then you know that's nine thousand dollars. If, it, if your $25,000 stock investment goes up 3%, it's a whole lot less. Right. You know, in addition to that, yes, you're leveraged, typically, um, and you've got a mortgage uh, on that, that piece of real estate. And like you say, then you have a renter in there who is actually paying that mortgage down or off uh, for you. Mm -hmm. and, and so you do get, uh, you, you get a double advantage, you do. I guess, is where I was headed with that. It was interesting. Uh, when when you Google, uh, uh, you know which pr outperforms stock market or real estate, and you know both sides want to prove their case, but you cannot deny uh, the leveraged aspect of real estate, and mm -hmm. and to have a tenant in there. I agree. So this is a huge huge opportunity. So um, uh, keep unpacking it for us, Matt. Okay. What's next? Okay, well, the first thing I want to say, a lot of people, once they're like, okay, I heard you could do this, Matt. And they're like, and I went and called Fidelity and I told them I wanted to buy the property on 123 Green Street with my IRA and they said I couldn't do it. Well, it's not because IRAs can't do it. It's because Fidelity IRAs can't do it, okay? Fidelity's a broker dealer. They're going to let you buy what they sell, which is stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. So what you're going to need to do is move your account or you can move a portion of it. And let's say this is an IRA right now at Fidelity. The majority of money, by the way, is in IRAs right now. It's more than 401ks. It's already in IRAs. But let's say you got an IRA at Fidelity. I'm going to come back to this point. And you're like, all right, I do want to buy this rental on 123 Green Street. Well, let's say the property is 150 grand and you want to buy it with cash. We can get to the leverage piece here that was brought up just a minute ago by Rich. Well, let's say you're just going to buy it with cash, 150 grand. Okay, you're going to transfer 150 grand from your Fidelity IRA and you're going to open up a self-directed IRA at directed IRA. And there's 30 other companies that do what we do. We happen to be the best at it, so you don't need to know the other 29. But you just go to directedira.com and you set up an account. 
So one, I get my new account set up. Step two, I transfer the amount of money over that I want. And you could do the whole account or a partial transfer, leave the rest in the stock market or do whatever you have if you want to. Now that 150 gets in the account at Directed IRA, then the third step is you authorize it to buy the property at 123 Green Street. Now your IRA puts the money down and owns the property. Your IRA is going to start getting the rental income. You're not getting the rental income. Like if this is Todd's IRA, it's not going to Todd. The rental income is going to Todd's IRA and building up cash in the account to buy the next investment. Um, and if you sell the property, you're not getting the money, Todd. It's not going on your personal tax return. You know, it's not going to your bank account. It's going to your IRA with us. And that's going to build up to the, then go do the next deal or to go buy and accumulate more assets in your retirement account. So it's kind of that three-step process. Open the self-directed account with somebody that lets you do this, like our company directed IRA. Two, you got to fund it. Most people are funding it by transferring money from an existing IRA or maybe rolling over an old employer 401k. And then the third step is authorizing the investment. You got the property you want to buy or the deal you want to do. You authorize us to do that. And it's done in the name of the IRA, not in your personal name. So, Matt, I've got a basic question. I, yeah. Sorry that I'm going all the way back to this. But as a yeah. person opens that self-directed IRA, um, is there a penalty for pulling it out of uh, their existing IRA or 401k, or does yeah, it go dollar question. for dollar? Good question. The whole thing just goes dollar for dollar, no penalty. So a lot of people do worry about that. Like, well, this is, they think they're like taking a distribution and there's a 10% early withdrawal penalty. Right, exactly. That's you know, what I was questioning. Yeah, and, and that's not the case. You got to transfer it. So just like you're going from Charles Schwab to Fidelity or Morgan Stanley to Merrill Lynch, you know, it's all the same. You're just moving the account provider. Got it's it. It's still an yeah, IRA. Sure. It's still mm -hmm. IRA money. Or it's if it was an, an old employer 401k, it could go to an IRA, no tax. There's no penalty on that. So, um, and it's happening between us. So like, you don't touch the money. It doesn't even go to you. It goes from, let's say you're at Fidelity over to directed IRA. And that's what's called a trustee to trustee transfer, no tax or penalty. Got and it. it can go back too. Let's say you sell the property and you're like, yeah, I want to go back in the stock market. Transfer it back. Okay, so you just described um, selling uh, or transferring 150,000 yep. from one IRA into the self-directed IRA and purchasing a home for 150,000. Yeah. Um, could I uh, or can a consumer uh, take their 150,000 out of their uh, other IRA, put it into the self-directed IRA mm -hmm. and purchase a $300,000 home mm -hmm. with 100,000 of that cash down and yep. the other 50,000 sitting there in that account to make monthly payment if need be. But okay. um, you have a renter in there then at that point and mm -hmm. the renter is paying rent, making the monthly payment. But yeah. can you actually purchase a home more expensive, 200, 300,000 with only yes. 100,000 of the IRA money or does it have to be straight cash, all cash deal? Yes, Meaning, you can you okay. can leverage with with a loan. Now, okay. this is really important. So you got to know two things. If you want to buy real estate with an IRA with a mortgage where you're leveraging, you know, using the IRA's cash and you're leveraging with debt to buy more investment, you know, more purchasing power, which is great. You got to know two things. First, the loan you get has to be what's called a non recourse loan. You got to get a non recourse mortgage. You're not going to your typical mortgage broker or bank that's going to lend you money on a regular mortgage. What happens when you do that is you have to guarantee the loan where there's a restriction on retirement accounts that says the account owner or anyone who's on a disqualified list cannot guarantee debt for the IRA. So I can't go guarantee the loan or use my credit to get the loan individually. Now there is five to 10 banks out there that lend to IRAs or 401ks buying real estate, single family rentals, condos, apartment buildings, whatever. There's a number of lenders out there who have a non-recourse IRA loan product. They're all on our website at directedira.com under the resources. You can find the banks and the bankers. Work with them because they have compliant loans that are these non-recourse loans. What happens under those loans is, you know, they're, the bank's going to lend the money to the IRA to buy the property. And in the event of default, they'll foreclose and take the property back. That's it. They can't come after the IRA for anything more. They can't come after the IRA owner. So it complies with their time and account rules because it's this non-recourse loan. So um, now to get a non-recourse loan, you are going to need to put down 30 to 40 percent 
it's not like you're going to get away with 10% down or 20% down, like, you know, another investment type property. You're going to be putting 30 to 40% down. No down the, payment assistant programs available yeah, here. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. So, um, but this is investment type stuff. And you're, again, you're leveraging the purchase. I've done this with my own retirement account, you know, so just, just, you know, we're talking about this stuff, like I buy real estate with my own retirement account. Like, yeah, I'm just not the guy cooking up the food and serving it to other people. Like I eat the food too here. You know, I'm like doing the same thing here. I believe in this strategy. So, okay. That was the first thing. The loan has to be non-recourse. Gotcha. The second thing you got to know for IRAs, and it's different for 401ks here, but for IRAs is there is a tax on the debt called UDFI. It's a chapter in my book. It's not, it's less than any other tax you'll pay on rental income or capital gain income. You can still depreciate everything, take every expense you can to, to minimize this or offset it. But basically what this is, is the IRS has said, okay, if you've got, let's say you're buying the property for 150 and 50 of it, uh, or let's say, let's give you an example, actually. You said you're buying a property for 300, 100,000 went into it from the IRA. The other 200,000 was a, a loan, let's say a non-recourse loan here. Right. When the IRS looks at that, they're like, well, when you make money, two thirds of that money is coming from non-retirement account funds. This was debt that you didn't, you didn't invest. This was non-retirement account dollars. So they tax the profits from the debt to an IRA. Now you get a used depreciation to offset this. You can expense everything off this. Most of our clients never pay it year to year on their rental income. But when you sell the property, if you still have debt on the property, there is a tax here. And I just want to note this to make sure people know this from the debt involved. This is called UDFI. But let me just say this, it's capital gains rate at most, and it's only on the piece of debt after you've written everything off. So it'll never be more than you'll ever, you'd ever pay personally, and you never pay it on the IRA piece of the cash invested. There's a lot of strategies to get rid of it, pay off the debt and sell the property with no debt, and you don't have it at all, because you only look at the debt at the time of sale. So there's a lot of tactics around that, but that's just something to know is, Got to be non-recourse debt, and there could be UDFI tax if there's still debt on the property by the time you sell it. So I just wanted to highlight that because a lot of people skip that. And they're like, eh, don't worry about it. But you should know about it. This is part of the rule book stuff. You said there was a difference if you're using 401k money. Yes. What is that difference? So a lot of clients, particularly our real estate investor clients, use what's called a solo 401k instead of an IRA. And we do those both accounts here at Directed IRA and in our law firm, KKO Lawyers is in a solo 401k basis, like a 401k plan for yourself. So a lot of real estate agents in particular, when they're doing it for themselves, or maybe a small business owner client of theirs that are just self-employed, they don't have an IRA. They'll have what's called a solo 401k. And that's what we recommend for almost all of our real estate professional clients. If you're self-employed with no employees, you know, you don't have a 401k at Dunder Mifflin or big fortune 500 company, right? You're self-employed. So do your own 401k plan. You can put 66,000 bucks a year into this thing. You can have traditional or Roth dollars. You can self-direct it and buy real estate. And it's exempt from this UDFI tax on real estate. So, and there's a chapter in my book on the solo K2, but basically the 401k industry lobbyists lobby to, to get an exception for 401ks. The IRA industry was asleep at the will and they had to pay tax on the debt piece. That's kind of how it sort of. So there's a little difference there on 401ks and so for some clients that are self-employed, that particularly our real estate clients, I love the solo K anyways, and there's a little nice perk there that you don't have to worry about UDI, UDFI on debt. That's huge. That is huge. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, good to know. Yep. Wow. So we have other podcast episodes just on the solo 401k. Mark and I have done two, by the way. So um, really, then even without this strategy, just you know, on the UDFI exception, if I was self-employed with no employees, I would be doing a solo K anyways. I happen to have, you know, we have like a hundred plus employees. It's so like, I can't do a solo 401k. I do a regular 401k, which I actually do self-direct, but we own our business so we can control that. Um, but for those self-employed, the solo K is really easy. Um, and you, again, you can throw 66,000 bucks a year into it. Wow. I know there's so much to unpack here. I wish we could have you for, you know, two yeah. or three hours, <laughs> but uh, I guess that's what your podcasts and everything else are for so um mm -hmm. so i, I am um uh, we've done a good job of explaining the concept the opportunity the why right mm -hmm. um let's talk about a couple things i've heard you talk about on your podcast rules yeah. meaning like with my 401k right now i can't just go pull out 20 grand you know and 
um, without either doing a loan or without following the rules, right? Or having tax mm -hmm. implications, because it's an it's a retirement um, yeah. uh, vessel. So basically, you do have to be careful. There are some rules. If you set up this self-directed IRA, you can't yeah. pay yourself. You can't do some other. Do you want to talk about that a little bit about yeah. some of the rules? Absolutely. Yeah. There's some things you got to know. Remember, like IRAs and 401ks are for long-term wealth building. You know, um, if you're 40 years old listening to this and you're thinking about using your retirement account, that's not going to help you tomorrow. You know, right? pay your bills or do, you know, this is building wealth so you can retire one day, you know, because right. once you hit 59 and a half, now I can start drawing on that IRA or 401k. But when you're 40 or 50, until you hit that age or 30, whatever you are listening here, like you've got, this is long-term wealth building. So keep that in mind. Now, there is a restriction on certain things you can and can't do. And there's a rule called the prohibited transaction rules. And this rule, it's section 4975 in the tax code. This is like one area of the tax code I'm like an expert on. <laughs> Not that that's like a big, you know, very exciting, but um, this is the important piece of the tax code for IRAs. Is but there basically an exciting part of the tax code? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry for yes. jumping in there, but I, I the end. as you yeah. said that, I'm just, you know, the things are firing off in my head. You so. know, for, for tax lawyers, it's all exciting. You know, yeah, okay, it, well, there we go. Because I'll tell you why. There's loopholes and there's opportunities there. There's If you know what you're doing in the tax code, there's ways you can yeah. keep money in your pocket rather than giving it up to the IRS because you didn't know any better. But this is one that you got to know because it kind of sets the rules on what you can and can't do. So, for example, let me give you an example. The, the, the primary rule says, and this is called the prohibited transaction rule, says your IRA account cannot transact with you or certain restricted family members. So basically, let's say I own real estate right now. I can't sell it to my IRA. Okay, The IRS doesn't trust us transacting our IRA account, which is a tax deferred or tax free vehicle in the case of Roths. They don't trust that account with us personally. They know we'll do shady stuff to avoid taxes. I would tell you to do, you know, smart stuff to avoid taxes but they, they've shut this down there's just they just basically said we know you're going to mess around with assets and try to move them in your retirement account to avoid taxes so we're going to restrict you from pushing your own assets you personally own over to your ira or 401k same thing if like with the certain family members your spouse is prohibited too for people in utah all of your spouses are prohibited all right and then that was a joke. I'm from Utah. That was a joke. <laughs> so don't for any of you in Utah, don't feel offended. I grew up there. So I earned the right to give that joke. Um, but also your kids are restricted, your parents, you know, so um, a common uh, question people have is, like, hey, my kids going away to college. I want to buy a rental in their college town and with my IRA and my kid will live in it. Now that doesn't work. OK, they're restricted and prohibited from having benefit or use of assets your IRA owns. Also, we have clients that buy short term rentals with their IRA. And they, they short-term rental them, whether it's a just like an Airbnb type thing. This could be on a beach. This could be in a, you know, a, whatever scenario. They're like, we've had clients calling, like, hey, there's a week, you know, the beach house, my IRA owns, no one's using it. Can I go take my family and stay there? No, you can't do that. Well, why not? Because you're benefiting from use of the asset your IRA owns. Well, okay, well, what if I pay the rent then? Well, you can't do that either because now you're paying your IRA personally and that's restricted. So what the IRS has done with this privilege transaction was they basically said, don't use your IRA to do stuff with yourself. Okay. Let your IRA go buy a rental and rent it to someone else. Let your IRA buy a property you're going to flip from someone else and have some other subcontractor or contractor work on it. Don't get involved here in having use or benefit of the property. You're trying to move assets from you personally to your IRA or from your IRA to you personally. So, um, so you got to be careful about that type of stuff when you're thinking of your IRAs. How you be doing with dealing with third parties as you're buying assets and renting them out. Right. And uh, I heard you say last night on your podcast too, you can't like pay yourself a salary if you go yeah. like fix the toilet or something like that. You shouldn't even right. be doing any of that. Is that right? I mean, you're the expert. Yeah. Yeah. So you there's... can't, there's cases on this. You, so, so, you know, you can't pay yourself compensation to work on the property. Um, you can't even work on the property. You can go to the property and check on it and tell a handyman or a contractor what to do, but you can't pick up the tool belt and actually work on the property. This is kind of another gray area where the IRS is like, eh, is that fair? You're adding value to the property in a tax-free account. The IRA should pay for that, pay for someone pay to fix Todd it. You can't pay Todd Sumney plumbing. Nope. 
No. Yeah. Darn it. It wouldn't be. Yeah. Good. It wouldn't be worth it. Yeah, <laughs> they're, totally they're not very good, you know. <laughs> um, but another thing for real estate professionals, and you know, is really important is um, it, commissions. So let's say your IRA is buying a property, all right, and there's like, well, there's a three percent buyer's agent commission. Okay, we're gonna have to waive that, reduce the purchase price by the three percent. Don't take pick up the commission. You can't financially benefit personally because your IRA buys something or sells something. So if you want to be the agent on your own transactions with your IRA, you're going to have to waive the commission. Okay, just to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know there's a lot of agents who are listening to this and their ears just perked up. So mm -hmm. they have to waive the commission. They cannot take the commission. They cannot take it personally. They cannot take the commission and redirect it back into their, their 401k or their IRA. Right. Uh, of whatever vehicle they're using so correct but they can all together yeah they can just say reduce the purchase price you know got it okay. so the ira basically benefits in the end right because it's paying less for the property and that's okay um yeah the issue is really the, the way the rule is written is you can't buy benefit from the property finance well there is a benefit there uh, mm -hmm. it's a it's a side benefit which is that we as real estate professionals do not have to take the income so we do not have to pay the the income tax on that income exactly Yet we are still buying the property at a discount yep great point so um okay so let's dig in a little bit into the how okay, okay. so somebody wants to do this mm -hmm. what's the first step that they need to take how do they get started how do they go about Mm -hmm. uh, uh, executing on this opportunity. Okay, first step is there's kind of two different lanes you can pick. And one is to use an IRA on its own. And I'm going to, that's a little more straightforward. The other is to use an LLC in the process as well. So let's go through the IRA on its own. And this is the three things I mentioned it quickly earlier. But step one, you got to set up an account with the company that'll let you self direct it. We're like a regulated trust company examined by the banking department audited by third party, two different CPA firms um, that come and audit us. You make sure you're working with, with like legit companies that are like banks or trust companies because they're regulated. There's some third party administrators in the industry. I would not recommend working on them. They're basically middlemen. There's been some those that have disappeared with people's money in the past. So use a regulated company in this space. So step one, open the self-directed account. Step two, like I said, you got to fund it. So move your money over from wherever it's at now. And then the third thing was is you authorize the investment with your self-directed companies. This is called a direction of investment or bi-direction letter that the companies have. And this basically says, hey, I'm buying the property in 123 Green Street. Send the earnest money here. When the, you know, the purchase property, all the documents come in for the, the purchase. Here's all the documents. If there's a lender involved with a non-recourse loan, here's the lender. And you're authorizing your IRA custodian to sign everything for the IRA. Because you're not signing on this stuff. It's not your deal you own. Your IRA is owning it, and the income and everything's going to your IRA. The deed is going to be in the name of the IRA. Now, if you're going on this option one here, most people will have a property manager because there's going to be income coming in, there's going to be expenses happening, and you're going to want to have that stuff being handled by the property manager. You don't want to be going back to your IRA custodian to make sure the utilities are paid or did the tenant actually send in their rent. Like That's going to be expensive because there's fees for that. So most people who are doing this option one are going to have a property management company that kind of receives the income and pays the expenses and then sends the cash flow back to the IRA. So that's option one, have the IRA buy it directly. Option two is the exact same thing as one, but rather when you get to that third step, the IRA buying the property, the IRA is going to invest in an LLC and own an LLC 100%. You will be the manager of the LLC personally. You don't have any ownership in the LLC. The IRA owns the LLC 100%, and it's going to invest its cash into the LLC. The LLC is going to have a bank checking account, which you as manager will have authority on. Then the LLC is going to buy the property. So now on the purchase contract to buy the property, the buyer isn't, you know, direct to trust company, FBO, Matt Sorensen, IRA. The buyer on the purchase contract is XYZ Investments LLC or whatever you decide to call your, your IRA's LLC. Some people call this a checkbook IRA. We call it an IRA LLC in our office. Um, now, but as manager of this LLC, you're signing the contract, right? You're cutting the checks. You're receiving the income. You're paying the contractor. You can have a debit card on this, you know? 
Um, and this LLC is kind of a little unique LLC. This is separate from any LLCs you might own personally for your business or your other real estate investments. There's restrictions on what the IRA can and can't do in it that have to be in the documents. Our law firm does these all the time. Um, but when your IRA owns the LLC 100%, there's no tax return for the LLC. You do have to keep the LLC active with the state. And then you still can't pay yourself a salary. So don't cut yourself checks from the LLC. Don't take money from the LLC. Remember, you don't own the LLC, the IRA does. So you, when you want to take money, you send money from the LLC back to the IRA, and then you take a distribution from the IRA. So option two would be kind of the IRA LLC method. And the benefit, of course, is you have this checkbook control and greater flexibility. So we have clients that like buy properties at auction. The LLC is critical, right? They need a cashier's check and stuff. We have clients do a lot of short-term real estate lending. They're lending to other people fixing and flipping properties on six-month notes and they're cutting multiple checks when money needs to be available. Those people love the LLC. Frankly, I even use the IRA LLC structure for my own account just because it's easier. <laughs> so the, that IRA LLC structure is really popular for real estate clients. And, and there's very ways you can, there's, that's just the, the simplest one is the IRA owns the LLC 100%. You can partner multiple people's IRAs into an LLC to go buy a property too. So there's lots of additional stuff that can be done there. Matt, over the years, there's been a lot of talk of, uh, having an LLC uh, registered mm -hmm. in a certain state or two yeah. or three. <clears throat> Last week, we heard the reasons not to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Mark was very uh, adamant about that. What's your take uh, on that? If, if yeah. the property, whatever property the state is in, should that LLC be Absolutely. in that state? Absolutely. That's always the rule of thumb. The only people who do it differently is people have no idea what the hell they're doing. Um, or there are people trying to sell you something um, in some ridiculous state. So um, we always recommend clients set up an LLC in the state where they're buying the property. If you go do a Nevada LLC or a Delaware LLC and you go buy a property in Arizona, they don't. Arizona doesn't care that this, this LLC is in Nevada or Delaware. You've got to register it into Arizona <laughs> for it to be valid. You've got to do what's called a foreign right. registration anyways. So now, I, now I'm paying the state of Delaware or Nevada, by the way, two of the most expensive states for annual fees, to have an L LLC in that state that does absolutely nothing for me. And I got to pay and register it into the, the state where my property is located anyways. Why don't I just go directly to the state where my property is located? Now, if you're like going to be a publicly traded company or you're going to have thousands of shareholders, maybe you go to Delaware or Nevada. But if you're buying rental properties and it's you or like a small group of people, or it's your IRA in this case, <laughs> don't be fooled by these ridiculous claims of all these, these states you should set up. Just set up the LLC in the state you're buying the property. Thank you. I, I, I think that's a, a big point. We, it's easy mm -hmm. for us to go down rabbit holes, and there's so much information out there, so yeah. much misinformation uh, uh, that, that I've seen. Uh, so yeah. thank you for pointing us in the right direction. Absolutely. So, so basically, um, to, to get started, someone needs to educate themselves, but then they're mm -hmm. going to pick, they're going to pick a lane, they're going to pick a direction. Yeah. And it's not the type of thing that they should always pick one lane. Like you're actually talking about two different ones because, yeah. or is there one that you say more often than not, you should take one lane, but, or it's yeah. just, they have to consult with the team and find out what they need to do. I think 90% of the time, real estate clients are going to want the IRA LLC structure where the LLC is involved. Okay. Um, if you're doing a rental, you're going to flip a property or there's a rehab involved. You're just going to want to have control in a checking account. It's so much better that way. On the other hand, let's say you're going to invest in a, in a real estate syndication. There's lots of people syndicating real estate deals and you can be one of a hundred investors that owns an apartment building, you know, deal. And a lot of IRAs are investing into that stuff. Just you don't need the LLC. Just invest your IRA into that LLC or limited partnership doing the syndication. Another scenario is some clients will do kind of private money lending with their IRA account to other people buying real estate. And they're just gonna have a loan secured on the property. You don't need the LLC for that. You can just, if you're gonna do one note or even a couple notes, you can do those right out of your IRA and skip the LLC. And the LLC is gonna cost you like 900 bucks. That's what the cost, what we charge in our law firm when you're doing it with directed IRA. So there's a little bit of a cost to it. Now, again, if you're doing a rental, a flip, a rehab, that's going to be well worth that 900 bucks. But if you're investing in a syndication, no, we have lots of clients that invest in private equity funds and 
pre-IPO stock and other stuff like that, they don't need the LLC either. But our real estate clients use it commonly and love it. Again, I even use it myself and I buy long-term buy and hold rentals with the property manager. But I like to use it just because it's easier to transact. Plus there's some asset protection too from the LLC. If something goes wrong on the property, they can't sue me. I got, I'm the manager of it. I get protection of the limited liability of the company. They can't go out for my IRA either. Okay. And if a person wants to own multiple properties, would you recommend one LLC mm -hmm. uh, to own uh, two, three, four properties? Or would you have separate LLCs for each of those properties? I know I'm going yeah. down a rabbit hole here. But no, that's I, fine. I we, we, yeah, yeah, no, it's a common question. So it kind of depends on the equity in the properties. So if you were buying like, you know, 10 properties that had mortgages to the hilt and they had, you know, this is whether you're using an IRA by, by the way or not. This is just LLC principles, how many LLCs to use for real estate. You know, we're going to look at how much equity is there. So again, 10 properties, 10,000 of equity. That's 100,000 of equity total. We're going to say put them all in one LLC. I don't, you know, what's at issue there is, see, when something happens on property number three of the 10, they can sue the LLC. They can't come down to you personally. You've got the asset protection of the LLC. They can't come after you personally, but they can sue the LLC and get any assets that the LLC owns. Okay. So those nine so those other properties other nine properties are have exposure risk. is what you're saying. Exactly. Right? Those other nine yeah, properties I... are exposed. But in that example, there's only 10,000 of equity a piece. There's right. nine, you know, there's a hundred grand. It's not worth it. Now let's say you had two properties. Each of them had 300,000 of equity a piece. Now I've got 600,000 of equity, all right? I'm gonna probably put those in a separate LLC each. Now, if they, something goes wrong on property number one, property number two is not affected, they can't jump over into the other LLC. So we look at how much equity do you have between your properties? And our rule of thumb is an, is an LLC makes sense for every 200, 200, 250 grand of equity. Once we have that much, we're gonna, let's say a client's got two or three properties, there's about 200 grand of equity and they're gonna buy the next one. We're like, well, let's put the next one in a new LLC because we want to spread the risk so that, you know, we don't want all of our eggs in one basket, so to speak. That makes sense. Okay, so Thanks. Rich, before we dig into, I kind of really want to dig into, because we only have a few minutes left, you know, the actual action items of how agents get involved themselves, the steps they take, and then also how they get their clients to engage or how they educate their clients. But as far as what we've talked about so far, do you have any more questions? Anything else that you want to, I mean, I have a ton, but I mean, this has been a good. I have questions I haven't even thought of yet, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, really, I think what it is, um, and, and my course of action is to have a conversation uh, with these guys uh, to take the next steps. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that's where I'm getting into digging in a little deeper now on the action items. Mm -hmm. So is your team, um, how does it start? It starts with a consultation. Yeah. Um, do they actually help guide or do they place out the, they say, well, mm -hmm. you could take lane one, you could take lane two, you need to decide, or do they help yeah. advise you based on your current situation? So if anyone can go to directedira.com and set up an account with one of our new account reps, it's free. They're trained. Now we don't give advice in, in the sense of like, Hey, I want to do this. Is that a good idea? Well, I don't know. Is that real estate property a good investment or not? We don't give any investment advice, but if you're like, all right, here's what I'm trying to do. I want to buy this property. I've got this retirement account set of funds over here. How do I do it? Now we can help with that. We can help with that to be like, all right, here's the type of account you're going to need. Here's the structure options to consider. Here's the process of what that's going to look like in your timeline. That's what we can help with. Um, one thing that some people mistake in the sense of they'll call us like, well, what real estate should I buy? Well, that's not what we do. You know, I don't, you know, buy real estate, buy crypto, invest in a startup, buy a private equity fund. I don't know. That's, we don't give investment advice, even within real estate on what real estate you should buy. So, um, but if you know what you want to do, you got the property in mind, um, we can help go over the steps on how to execute that and pull it off in the law firm. And if you're like, man, I got a thousand tax questions and how does this work with the rest of my stuff I'm doing? And can I do this? And I want to partner with this person and that we can refer you to our law firm and you might need a little more help and consulting from a legal and tax standpoint. Um, but just executing common real estate transaction, really common, um, uh, with a, with our team at directed IRA. And so, um, and what I'll say a number of things you can do on your own, by the way, is um, get educated on this, on what, so you know the right questions to ask. 
You know what I mean? So when you get to that console or you get to the process, you kind of know what you're doing already. You're just getting confirmation. And should I do it this way? Should I do it that way? We have our podcast, we have our webinars, we have our alt asset summit coming up in two weeks. It's altassetsummit.com going over how to buy all these different types of alternative assets with IRAs. So, um, so get educated, but then yes, our team is ready to help once you know what you want to do. And we'll go over the options and structures people commonly use to pull it off. And we'll help you get through all the paperwork and process to get it done. It's not hard, like I said, but it is learning a new thing. If you've never done it before, remember the board game. It's not painful. You can learn it once you've done it once or twice. When you're calling us back to your second or third deal, it's the same process. <laughs> okay. Can you describe how you mentioned <laughs> earlier the opportunity or the tactic of real estate agents educating their clients? Mm -hmm. So maybe four or five of their clients have voiced that they would like to um, have some interest in investment properties yeah. or in something. So could you describe how a real estate agent can leverage this with their clients based on your Absolutely. experience? Absolutely. We've seen lots of real estate agents have huge success in talking about this as a strategy because now they're talking about something that their clients that have bought real estate from them in the past or prospective clients have never heard. And most people are highly interested in this strategy. You know, it's just like, I'm like, you know, once I start talking about it at a cocktail party, everybody like has, I got a line of people with questions because people are like, wow, I didn't know I could do that. And yes, when I think of the investable money I have to grow and build wealth, it's in my IRA or 401k, you know, and they're like, and nobody's happy and in love with the mutual fund they own. Trust me. <laughs> but right. people like talking about real estate. All of a sudden you're the real estate professional that knows good deals and opportunities. I've got an option for you. <laughs> here's, here's some properties that I'm showing investors. And did you know you can use your IRA or 401k to do it? And so it's been a really popular strategy, I think, for agents. One, to kind of help stand out from other people that you know what you're doing. Two, it gets you to an investor crowd that I think is a little, a little bit untapped in the real estate market. Um, there's some agents that do it really well. Um, we have a number of agents that do it very, very well. But it's an area where if you're interested, you can... I think have a lot of success, but we see it even from agents that are giving property ideas for long-term rentals, even short-term rentals. I'm seeing agents focus on that, but knowing the strategy of you can use an IRA. And even if you already work with investors right now, you've had clients buy rental properties from you in the past and you're already in that business. Um, go back to those same clients and talk about how your IRA can buy real estate. Have you thought about that? Um, well, again, a lot of people just don't know. And so, this is one of the most untapped resources out there. Whether you're thinking about building wealth for yourself, because you're like, I know real estate and that's probably should build my own retirement account, but also for all your clients out there that are that love real estate, that want to know how they can invest more, that want to know how they can own it. And their single biggest resource to do it's their IRA or 401k. No, no one's talked to them about it yet. So I think it's a huge opportunity. I want to take a minute and introduce all of you agents to homes.com and urge you all to engage with homes.com and explore the opportunities and value that they provide you, the agents, and our entire real estate industry. Homes.com is a different type of home search portal. They are completely dedicated to your listing, your lead, your commission. And they're the fastest growing home search website in the industry. Simply put, no other agent can ever pay to appear on your listings so you can rest assured that all of the work you've done to get that listing will be rewarded when consumers contact you directly when they have any questions. In addition, homes.com is the ideal place where you can invite your clients as they have a host of easy to use and innovative agent client collaboration tools. So you can be connected to your clients and not worry about other agents interfering. With comprehensive safe search, intelligent home recommendations, and much more, working with your clients on homes.com is the premier experience for you and your clients. You're getting free leads already from homes.com, and many more are sure to come as they ramp up their consumer marketing. Please make sure that you activate and update your homes.com profile. It's 100% free. Homes.com is part of the CoStar group of companies that has decades of experience running the most powerful real estate marketplaces in the country like Apartments.com that have your listing, your lead as the heart of every business. Again, visit Homes.com to activate your free profile or email therealstate 
at homesmart.com to be notified of upcoming homes.com events in your area or to be connected directly to your local homes.com team. So a uh, quick question if I have, I know, I know we're tight on time, but yeah. is there a way that um, individuals can help their children get started oh, yeah. at a younger age <laughs> with this tactic? Absolutely. Um, you know, you can do what's called a kids Roth account. We have a kids Roth account at our office. Great for real estate clients, because if you're self-employed, you have your own business. Why aren't you hiring your kids in your business? That's a tax strategy. Mark and I talk about all the time for our business owner clients is hire your kids in your business, pay them, take an expense and deduction for you, which is awesome, right? Pay it to your kids who are under the standard deduction. You pay no state or federal income tax, as long as you pay them under their standard deduction. And then but don't just give them the money that they're going to blow or reimburse yourself for expenses you've paid. You could do that. How about throwing it into a Roth IRA? Now that money's in a Roth IRA and can be invested to buy real estate. You know, I've had clients that do wholesale deals with their clients, their kids Roth IRA, and they got like six figure accounts. I have a client who did a Coverdell education savings account that you, cause you can self-direct those. You can self-direct the health savings account. We do those at our office too. And they used a Coverdell account to, and he did some option real estate deals on some properties and he got over a six figure, he's got a six figure account. His kid was going to Georgetown. Thank goodness he had this covered L cause I saw the expense, the payments go back out to cover the tuition tax free, by the way, he paid no tax on the gains. It was ridiculous how large the tuition there was, but it was paid by this covered L. So there's a lot of strategic people being smart about using these accounts, Roth IRAs in particular, um, cause they're totally tax free vehicles. We love those for kids. Um, health savings accounts. I mean, I love Roth IRAs for adults too, but, um, but there's definitely ways to get your kids involved in this. And, you know, if you can get them into real estate deals, it's a great way to teach your kids about real estate, right? Here, here's what your IRA is investing in. They could even partner into an LLC with you um, with their Roth IRA and your retirement account as an option too. So lots to learn there, but some cool strategies if you do want to get your kids involved in it. it's the kids Roth IRA that I'd, I'd look to first. Awesome. Great tip. Okay, so uh, uh, so before we get to the final action items again, just the takeaways, um, uh, what did we miss? We're, we're, <laughs> we're you know, you're we're learning a lot from you. What did Gosh, we miss? I think we're, I think we're covering it all. The one thing I'll say is that, um, you know, and we got to briefly touch on it is, you can partner your IRA with other people and even personal funds. Sometimes we'll have clients come to us and it's like a husband and wife, for example, and they'll be like, Hey, I got a hundred grand in my account. My spouse has 200 grand in their account. We want to partner together to buy this property for $300,000 or or it could be a property for $900,000 and they're getting a mortgage loan for the other 600, but on their own, they can't do it themselves, but they could partner together into an LLC, which we'll call a a multi-member IRA LLC. Those are a little more to set up. It's about 1500 bucks to do a partnership LLC but we can put multiple IRAs into one LLC to go buy a property. Um, you could even be like, Hey, this is my brother's IRA. This is my IRA. This is my spouse's IRA. This is our personal funds. We can partner all those funds into an LLC that then goes and buys a property. And you always break up the ownership in the LLC based on the dollars invested between the accounts or the individuals. So, but the multi-member IRA LLC is another strategy used where you can pool accounts together into one LLC that can go buy a property. So that's a great little uh, technique and strategy too. Great. Good stuff. Rich. Yeah. What else do you want to ask? I, I'm I <laughs> kind of on overload actually. I, I really don't have any other questions to ask. I would default back to uh, Todd, your last question uh, uh, to Matt, which is, is there anything else that you want the audience <laughs> to hear uh, before yeah. we sign off? What I would say is, um, and I I said this briefly for a moment earlier is, you know, the self-directing concept, it's not for everyone, but I'm telling you it's for real estate clients. It's for people that are in the real estate business. It's for your customers that want to buy rental properties that want to grow wealth and build it that way. And so our message is always like connecting this 35 trillion we started about back to assets and investments people want to own. And they've just, Wall Street has just brainwashed everyone to think you can only buy stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Well, that's only what you can buy with IRAs on Wall Street, you know, and with broker dealers. What do you think you're going to get investment options from when you have an IRA with a broker dealer? What do broker dealers sell? Stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. So 
Um, investing in real estate has um, been a tried and true method to build wealth in America. Um, and people can use their IRA or 401k accounts to do it. It's, for many of us, it's our most investable piece of money we have out there to acquire and build assets, to grow and build wealth. Just know that same great tax strategy and that same great wealth building tool of IRA or 401ks works for real estate. So that'd be the message I have. Um, and we're here for you. If you need help, direct at IRA.com. Like I said, you can get an appointment with one of our new account reps to go over the process and getting set up to do that. Our directed IRA podcast that Mark and I do together. We're 50 plus episodes in. We have webinars on directed IRA.com. My book, the self-directed IRA handbook, you know, if, especially if you've got the professional or the attorney or CPA, that's got a million questions about what you're doing, or maybe even you real estate, you know, agents or something, you've got a client that's like, well, my attorney says I can't do this. Or my CPA says I can go buy my book for 20 bucks. Okay. There's a hundred tax citations in there of cases and tax code and everything that explains how this works. So um, it's a legit strategy. It's a great wealth building tool. And I think more and more people in real estate just need to know about it. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for being here with us today. You know, um, you know, what's popping through my head right now is uh, a real estate professional almost, mm -hmm. um, you know, wanting to conduct a seminar or, uh, yeah. or is, do you know of any uh, real estate professionals that are doing that, conducting a seminar and educating oh, yeah. it and then connecting them? Or is it better to do one-on-one -on -one with all your clients or... We've done it. I mean, we've done it with thing. bigger offices, you know, brokerages that have, that can fill a room. I've done them quite a bit actually over the years um, where we just come and teach the topic to other real estate professionals and their clients. They can invite, they can invite to it. Um, so we've done lots of educational content, you know, virtually too. So, um, but I think it's, you know, and it all depends on people's base. You know, some people have a huge book of business. Some agents are just starting and they, they might have one or two people in mind that they might want to talk to about this. So I think everybody approaches a little bit different, but um, I think the first thing is, is any real estate professionals, like this is like a tool on your tool belt. You've got to have like, this is, yep. you should be doing an inventory of your clients to know who's got IRAs or 401ks. Like when you're talking to them about properties they could buy, particularly investment properties, you need to be asking, do you have money in an IRA or 401k? Because I'm telling you, let me just give you this stat. 10% um, of US household wealth, 10% of US household wealth is in IRAs. Now, I'm not even talking about 401ks that's at their day job or anything. I'm just talking about, they've already moved it to an IRA. It's invested in the stock market or in mutual funds. Uh, how does that, how do, how, if I'm a real estate professional, I'm not even, if I'm not even talking about 10% of where U.S. household wealth is that can be invested in real estate tomorrow. Like I am just missing the boat. I'm just, I'm not prepared to adequately help my client. I'm going to leave money on the table in terms of business I can do. But I think also it shows that you're a little more sophisticated as a real estate professional in getting business that, you know, these strategies and this stuff that the other real estate agents don't like it, right. it. It makes you look good because you know, the strategies that are cool and are, are, um, and, and really can make a difference to someone because the money's there in IRAs or 401ks. Right. right. Well, Matt, um, I'm telling you, you have been a uh, wealth of information here today. Uh, I've learned so much. Um, I have not read your book yet, but I, it arrives tomorrow and All I'm right. going to, <laughs> I'm going to dig in and um, Enjoy. I'm excited about this. Topic. Matt, I just want to say great stuff. Fantastic information. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, and uh, I know that you've touched a lot of people uh, right where uh, it touches them. You know, you're, you've, you've, you've hit them in the heart, you've hit mm -hmm. them in the wallet. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, those are, those are two spots uh, that when connected, uh, a person can make an awful lot of money the right way. So uh, yeah. it's just great Love information. It. Thank you again for being here. All okay. right, so Thanks real, so real much, quick, Rich. Thanks, son. A, a call to action for everyone again, if you're listening and you don't have benefit of the visuals, the Self-Directed IRA Handbook by Matt Sorensen, M-A-T-S-O-R-E-N-S-E-N. -E -E Website, directedira.com. Uh, they do have podcasts there that I have been listening to, which are phenomenal. And um, their law firm, KKOS Lawyers, uh, I, you can um, get connected with them as well. So tons of resources there. You have this podcast. Please join us next week for uh, episode number three of this series. So this was a three-part series. 
uh, part one, don't screw up your S Corp and how to implement the trifecta for real estate agents. Episode two, today's self-directed IRAs, unlocking the $35 trillion in IRAs, 401ks to invest in real estate. Next week, our next episode, episode three, hot tax strategies, estate planning, and key protection and privacy tactics. So thank the you all. The heavy lifting next week. What was that? I said it's the heavy lifting next week. It is heavy lifting. Next As week. if this hasn't been heavy lifting. <laughs> this is great stuff. Yeah, but, really love it. Matt Sorensen, thank you so much for joining us here today. For all of you listening, thank you for joining us here on The Real Estate Podcast. We look forward to seeing you back on future episodes, and we'll see you soon. We'll see you next time. Like what you're hearing on The Real Estate? Tell your friends about us. Tell them to check out all of our episodes on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. And don't forget to send any topics you want us to tackle to the real estate at homesmart.com.